नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन 16 ऑफ अवर कोर्स ऑन ऑपरेशन मैनेजमेंट एंड वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड थ्री वीक्स ऑफ डिस्कशन ऑन दिस टॉपिक एंड इफ यू रिमेंबर इन वीक वन वी हैव कवर्ड द फंडामेंटल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ ऑपरेशन मैनेजमेंट एंड वी हैव सीन दैट वर्ट आर द फंक्शन एंड स्कोप ऑफ ऑपरेशन मैनेजमेंट वाई डू वी डू द ऑपरेशन मैनेजमेंट इन एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड वाई डू वी नीड टू स्टडी दिस कोर्स एट ऑल and then we have seen in week 2 the product design and development we must know that what the company must produce in order to be competitive in the market when they should make their product obsolete themselves when they must take a decision regarding coming up with a new product when they must take a decision related to pushing their product out of the market and coming up with a new and a revised or a modified product so we have seen product life cycle we have seen the concept of value engineering design for manufacturing design for assembly rapid prototyping ergonomics all these are the catch words in today's product design and development all the product design and development cannot be covered in two and a half hours of discussion it requires a complete course maybe of 30 hours when we have to address when we want to study the fundamental or the basic aspects of product development product design and development rather i must say but we have seen what are the latest tools and techniques used in product design and development in the third week we have seen that if we know what we have to produce then our next decision is that how much it what quantity we must produce so that the product is sold in the market we do not over produce or we are not found short of production so both ways there is a challenge if we over produce we book our resources our resources are not properly utilized the we have made the product but it is not selling in the market on the contrary there is demand in the market people are asking for the product but we are not able to produce the product so the forecast is very very important from operations management point of view so we know what we have to produce and then we have to see that how much we have to produce so the demand forecasting or sales forecasting we have covered in our week 3 we have covered that what do you mean by sales forecasting what are the qualitative methods at least two we have seen what are the quantitative methods of forecasting we have seen with the help of certain examples so we now till now we know that we have understood that how to design a product maybe the fundamental of product design then we have seen how to, we have seen how to calculate that how much we must produce now let us see suppose we have this this information or this data available with us that this is the product this is the quantity in which we are going to sell this product the third stage is now we have to produce this product we have to decide that where we are going to produce this product where we are going to manufacture this product where our facility or the manufacturing facility factory enterprise will be located and for that we have to do the facilities planning we have to decide the plant location as well as its layout so we have to first decide that if our is a multinational company we have to take a decision that whether we are going to place our manufacturing facility in india or we are going to place it in some other country we have to see that within india whether our company is going to be located in the northern part of the country or the southern part of the country or the eastern part or the western part so we have to take a very conscious decision that where the factory or the organization or the enterprise has to be located and that requires little bit of judicious decision it it requires a very very we can say intelligent decision because it affects the overall productivity the overall success of any organization if you locate your facility in a place where you have certain adverse factors we will see in today's presentation that what are the problem areas or rather to sound a little positive we will try to see what are the critical success factors if we consider these factors we will be able to be productive effective efficient in our operations and our plant will be located at the best possible position within the country as well as within the 
state. So, we will see that what are the factors that are that govern our decision related to plant location. So, we will see what are the important parameters affecting facilities planning and then maybe in the subsequent session, maybe in the next session, we will cover them in detail, we will try to understand the nitty gritties of these factors way by taking certain examples. So, let us start our discussion related to facilities planning and let us have a systematic discussion on this topic. Before starting the definition, maybe one thing uh, that I must make clear is that once we have to make a decision related to where we have to place or where we have to establish our factory some of the decisions are very common or common sense based decisions. If suppose I ask any engineer where our factory must be, prompt will come the reply near to the raw materials, near to the market, where we get some tax benefits, where we get some relaxation in excise. So, maybe we will see that some of the things are very, very common, very, very common sense based, but we are not able to structure our thought that we are not able to pen down on a piece of paper that which location is better from all other aspects also. Government policies are there, then legal procedures are there. So, there are number of other factors also which help us to take a decision that where our factory must be located if we want to make use of the advantages that are offered maybe by state policies or maybe in terms of labor or in terms of natural resources or in terms of the civil infrastructure. So, there are number of parameters that add to our common sense which usually we use while making a decision related to the plant location. So, some of you may be wondering that it is easy to uh, take a decision. I totally agree with all of you that this is a common sense based decision, but still if we have a structured opinion on this decision, I think it will add to it will not reduce or take away anything from our common sense, but even further reinforce the decision that we are going to so, let us try to understand in a very systematic manner that what are the important maybe aspects related to the facilities planning. Now, you can see facilities planning encompasses two things. As I have given a very maybe a long I must say introduction today. We already know that what we want to produce, we know in what quantity we, want, we have to produce. Now, we have to take two more decisions that in which part of the globe or which part of the world our location or our plant must be located. And once we decide that which we have this much of square hectare or maybe whatever uh, units all of you may like to have, we have this piece of land available with us in this state and in this country. Within that land, how our location or how our facilities, our infrastructure must be located strategically in order to ensure productive, efficient and effective production. So, two important decisions are there. One is where this piece of land must be, that is country, state, within state may be a district and within district there will be a specific location. So, maybe from we can say global point of view, first we have to identify the country, then we have to identify the state, then we have to identify the land where we are going to start our production, that is plant location. Second is plant layout that within that piece of land, again I am reiterating so that it becomes clear to all of you that within that piece of land, how our various facilities will be placed, how our various facilities will be located. For example, if we take an example of any IIT, there can be academic area at one place where all the classes are engaged. There can be a hostel area where all the hostels are there and the students stay there. 
during their off hours and then there can be a residential complex where the staff members stay there can be a, a sports arena where the students and the staff go and play so there are specific addresses specific locations within this piece of land where the various facilities are placed so that basically is the layout and if you enter an or, or, organization or an educational institute you will see that a layout is shown it can be a three dimensional modeled layout or it can be or a scaled down model usually we call it in technical terms or it can be a two dimensional depiction of the various facilities that we call as a layout of the organization. So, we will study both of these. Our first focus is the plant location that how or what are the critical factors which will help us to identify a piece of land where we want to start our production. Once we identify that land, our next stage will be how to place our facilities within that land so that optimal utilization of the floor area is ensured or optimal utilization of the land is ensured. So, let us now first try to understand plant location. Plant location as I have already explained, I am just reading it for you just to reinforce this concept. Uh, in your thought process. Plant location refers to the location of an organization or we can say it is the address of an organization. It refers to the selection of specific site as I have been using the word specific location. It refers to selection of a specific site for establishment of the physical unit of production processes. So, we usually call it in general terms as a factory that this is the address of the factory we have to decide that where our factory is going to be located or where our production process or production facility is going to be located. So, it is a strategic decision of an organization. So, I think all of you will agree with me that this is a very important decision because it influences the overall productivity of an organization. Suppose we locate our facility at a place where we do not get skilled labor who can work for us, we may not be able to produce effectively and efficiently. We locate our uh, facility or factory at a location where we are not able to get the raw material easily and constantly, consistently, then also our productivity or our production will be affected. So, we can take number of examples where the things have gone wrong because of the wrong selection of the plant facility. So, it is important that we give due weightage to this decision that where the plant should be located and therefore, it is at the strategic decision level that is usually we know that the highest level of decision making is the strategic decision making followed by the corporate decision making then followed by the operational decision making. So, location of the plant is the most important decision and therefore, it is taken at the highest level of the organization. Now, need of plant location, the, uh, whatever examples I have taken, I have taken from the point of view that we are going to establish a new factory. Then in case of an existing factory also, sometimes we need to relocate to a new position because of the government policies or maybe because of certain benefits that we derive out of changing our location from one place to another place. So, need of plant location can be if we want to start from scratch, a new factory has to be located or the relocation of an already existing factory. Now, why there is a need of plant location means for an existing facility. Now, suppose we already have an existing facility because in the last slide, I think it was slightly uh, maybe difficult to understand that already if we have established a factory, we must have taken care of all these factors before establishing the factory. Then why do we need to change from an existing factory to a new factory? So, this is uh, these are the points those that explain that that for existing facility, we can change from one place to another because of the change in availability of resources. 
we may have chosen the earlier location because of the proximity to the resources or specific resources. Now those resources may have dried up or the resources may have been completely utilized. So you need to take a decision regarding shifting of your plant location or the shift of demand. We may have located a particular uh, industry in a specific area because it was close to the market, it was close to the demand where the demand is generated, but now the demand has diminished or it has uh, stopped. So, you need to change or there is a shift in demand, there is more demand of our product in some other area. So, we think that why not to shift our manufacturing base to that particular area only. Then to expand new target market, so that is also very important that if we want to develop a new product market, we may have this facility here, but we may start or may think of creating a new facility at a different place or extension of this facility at a different place where we want to develop our target market. Development of a new technology may also lead to a uh, shift in the existing facility and the socio-political and legal changes which are beyond our control sometimes may force the organ, uh, organization or the administration of the organization to shift its base from one location to the other location. So, these are the maybe factors or maybe say we can say the forcing uh, factors which may influence an organization to take a strategic decision of shifting the location from one place to another place. Now, these are the location decisions you can see the country decision. We have to first decide suppose I have already taken an example that ours is a suppose multinational company. So, the multinational company can decide any country where they can start their operations. So, first decision is the country decision that where in which part of the globe the factory or the plant should be located. There are some critical success factors which we must consider before taking this strategic decision. First is political risks, government rules, attitudes and incentives as our focus as the focus of the current government is make in India. So, the point can be that we are inviting the global leaders in manufacturing to set up their plant locations in India. How we are attracting them by maybe giving them certain incentives, certain amendment in the government policies and rules which will help these foreign big foreign players, big market leaders to come and set up their locations or set up their factories in India. So, political risks, government rules, attitudes and incentives are important in this decision of locating a plant in a specific country. Cultural and economic issues, location of markets. Now, suppose maybe there is a beverage company and we have the biggest market in India. So, they may take this decision or a conscious decision that we must be close to our market. So, if India is the biggest market for this multinational company, they would definitely like to set up its manufacturing facilities in India only. So, because of the large segment of the market. So, location of markets, labor availability, attitudes, the attitudes of the labor and then the productivity of the labor, the costs involved because wages and cost is an important criteria because each country may set up certain minimum wages for its workers. So, skilled workers may have different minimum wages, unskilled labor may have different minimum wages. So, with those wages what would be the cost of the product that sometimes uh, maybe is an important parameter for the uh, administrators or the organizers of the organization to take a decision that where our uh, location must be uh, located when they are taking a decision globally and they want to decide or pinpoint their point uh, pinpoint their focus on a specific country. So, labor availability, attitudes, productivity, cost these are parameters related to labor. Then availability of supplies, communications, energy that is also very very important. Maybe 
some of the countries may be totally dependent on nuclear energy some of the countries may be totally dependent on coal somewhere it may be uh, petroleum based power generation so maybe different sources of power generation are there so every organization or factory would require energy so they will take a decision that wherever we are getting energy what is the cost of energy that is also an important decision exchange rates and currency risks so maybe there can be a country where the economy is not that stable the, there is there are chances that the currency fluctuates or the global uh, level of the currency fluctuates too often so they will take a decision that there is an issue we must not venture into this particular country so whenever a decision has to be taken related to the country where the company wants to set up their plant they will take into account all these parameters to just to revise these political risks government rules and regulation cultural and cultural and economic issues location of markets labor availability attitudes productivity of the labor costs of labor then availability of supplies communication energy exchange rates and currency risks these are some of the parameters which will influence the decision of any organization to select a plant location in a specific country similarly if it is decided that we are going to focus on country x next will be that if within country x where in which particular state in which particular region our plant should be located so next will be the region and the community decision first is the country decision we have seen certain parameters the next is the region or the community decision here maybe what are the important parameters the corporate desires maybe sometimes the after the strategic decision is taken that it will be country x now within x it may be sometimes the corporate may feel that all our uh, maybe competitors are located in a specific region why not to go to that region only because it will help us to leverage on the expertise or maybe the vendors that the that have been developed by these existing uh, corporate houses there so maybe one is the corporate desire second is attractiveness of the region maybe as i have already told there can be different uh, factors of defining the attractiveness but one of the reason regions can, uh, one of the reasons can be that already that is an established reason for a specific industry for example for it and computer based industry there can be a particular region in a particular country which is well known for automakers or automobile industry there can be a specific reason in a specific country which is well known so maybe a company may take a decision that this region is known for maybe auto making so why not to establish our plant or manufacturing facility where it is well established because maybe we are taking the advantage of the work related to plant location which has been done by our competitors or by the people who are already in that market they may have also taken into account all these factors and therefore only they must have established their plant at that location it may be near to the ancillary units which are feeding them the sub assemblies which are being finally assembled into the into an automobile so that is another decision that is attractiveness i have only only highlighted one aspect there can be another aspects of attractiveness it may be climatically suitable uh, in order to justify its attractiveness it may be a house to a skilled people those who have migrated to that place although uh, intelligent people corporate people are staying in that region so that can also be a reason of finding attractiveness in that location so there can be different parameters of attractiveness so corporate desires attractiveness of the region labor availability the cost of labor attitudes towards unions so that is also very very important related to the employee unions that what is the attitude of the employee unions in the specific region then cost and availability of the utilities utilities can include maybe electricity charges environmental regulations are also important maybe different states may have different regulations related to the environment or then usage of environmental resources government incentives and fiscal policies 
proximity to raw materials and customers which I have already highlighted then land and construction cost maybe suppose you want to set up a plant maybe in the hilly terrain you will have to add the cost of construction there it is not that easy to procure the land and do the construction activity in uh, hilly, hilly regions. So therefore the land and construction cost will also add to the overall investment that the company is planning to do in setting up a plant location. So by now we have seen that what are the critical success factors or critical factor that must be considered when we are selecting a specific country for setting up of our setting up of our plant. Within the country then we have to decide the state and for selecting a particular state again there are factors maybe some of them are similar in nature. So those factors again we will consider and we will decide on a particular state that within country X my state will be X1. So when I have now finalized the state based on these factors where the factory will be located. Then there are site decision next is within that district or within that state where our site will be located. Now here the critical success factors are site size and cost, air, railway or maybe waterway systems that are available for transportation, zoning restrictions are there, nearness of services and supplies needed, environmental impact issues. So for the site when we have identified a particular site we will see that whether air transport is available, rail line, nearness to rail line, if waterways can be used for transportation then what is the land use policy of that region. Then we have to decide on the environmental impact issues also maybe cutting of trees may not be allowed in a specific region so we cannot select the site close by to that region because we may later on think of expansion of the facility and if that is the policy that cutting of trees is not allowed you cannot expand in x and y domain. So that can be one decision that we cannot select this site because tomorrow if we have to expand we have hilly region around we have jungles around where we cannot cut the trees. So we will not select that site because of the policy that cutting of trees is not allowed just I am trying to give an example. So we are trying to see that once we have identified the country, we have to identify a state, within the state we have to identify the site where our location would be there or where our plant location would be finalized. Then coming on to the second part as I have already told that once we know that where our location will be, the next is we have identified the site. Within this site where we are going to put our uh, maybe manufacturing plant, where our employees will stay, where will be the recreational facilities for the employees, all these decisions will be coming under the broad umbrella of plant layout. So first thing is plant location, country state, region. Then the within that site we have to identify the layout as given on your screen. You can see there is an administrative office building, there is a palletizer, shredder, process building, this large building is the process building. Then there is a power plant also inside the site where the power is being produced. Then there is a maintenance warehouse, there is a agricultural dispatch. So we have different area earmarked for different facilities within the site. So plant location has helped me to identify a site where I am going to place my manufacturing facility. Once the site is finalized within the site where which facility will be created will come under the plant layout. So there are two definitions according to Riggs. The definition given is very very simple and very, very informative. The overall objective of plant layout is to design a physical arrangement that most economically meets the required output in terms of quantity and quality. So basically we have we need to understand that our facility within the site must be so located that we are able to achieve our main 
operations management objectives that is we must be able to produce the desired quantity of material in desired quality and offer our customers the best product that is available in the market. According to Zundi, plant layout ideally involves allocation of space and arrangement of equipment in such a manner that overall operating costs are minimized. So, we have to decide the location of the various facilities within the site so that our overall operating costs are minimized. So, two definitions give different may be objective first is right quantity right quality we must be able to produce by locating our facilities judiciously the second says we must physically arrange our facilities in such a way that the overall operating costs are minimized so plant layout basically we will have one complete discussion may be a week's discussion five sessions of half an hour each on plant layout in which we will discuss the objectives of plant layout factors influencing plant layout what is an ideal layout we will try to study the importance of plant layout as well as the types of plant layout so this is basically we are going to study and finally we will see the material flow pattern within the plant layout and tools and techniques that are as adopted for designing a good plant layout so two things are important from facilities location point of view the plant location and the plant layout so plant location we will further discuss in this week today is the first session that is session number 16 in week number 4 in our course on operations management. So, we have only highlighted the importance of plant location and plant layout. So, in this week we will have 4 more sessions dedicated to plant location only and in the next week our focus will be on plant layout. Thank you.